Okay, so we are now ready to go to the bake menu and then choose bake with normal map. But if we wanted to include a displacement map, we could choose that option here. For demonstration purposes, the normal map option will work just fine. The baking dialog will allow us to make either global or localized edits. For local edits, we would use the brush to pull or push vertices on our baking cage. For example, by default, on the outer shell, I see a preview and I see an inner shell preview. So on the outer shell, the default action is to pull along the normal. So it's going to pull outwardly. If I were on the inward shell, this default action would pull inwardly because the normals are pointing that direction. So let's go ahead and brush here. All right, I just noticed that additional extrusion, which we used earlier, is disabled while you are using the brush in order to prevent any confusion. Let's just make that three. And now I can pull that just in these areas to make sure that during the baking process, these parts don't get clipped. And yes, I probably should turn symmetry on. On the outward shell, anything that's poking through, I want to push that outer shell above it so it's not poking through. And on the inner shell, it would be just the reverse. So I think we're looking good everywhere else. Now let's preview the inner shell. So the inner shell, we actually shouldn't see it. Here, we may want to press that. So let's hold down the control key to go the other direction. All right, I think we're good. Now, if we want, we can toggle ghosting. It's mostly beneficial when you're working on the inner shell. It lets you see through the voxel object or the surface mode object in order to see what the shell looks like on the inside. Let's go and turn that off, and then we will hit OK. With the name correspondence, it's going to go through and bake each object that corresponds from the sculpt tree panel to the retopo objects panel. So one at a time, it'll go through and look for fibers copy, fibers copy. It's going to bake those two together, and then in a sequence, it's going to go through and look for these others and bake those separately, but again, in a sequence. Okay. I'm going to go with a 4K map. And we'll choose our preset for a blender. I right, OK. When it's done, I'll click the Paint tab. We have now finished with our baking, and we have our result here in the Paint workspace. There is one slight problem. We have both our resulting low polygon baked mesh and our high poly sculpt mesh in the same workspace, or at least it's visible in the same workspace, and that obscures our results. So in order to assess the results, we need to hide the original high polygon or voxel object. To do that, we can choose one of two different ways. The easiest way is to go to the View menu and uncheck Show Voxels in paint room. You can assign a hotkey to this to make it much easier. So that way when you come back into the paint workspace to examine your results, you can just hit that hotkey and it will immediately hide the voxel object. So another option is to go to the sculpt tree, which was formerly named vox tree. And you can just go to the root here and hide all of that. Okay. So Again, let's go to the View menu and just uncheck Show Voxels in Paint Room. Now, if we, for whatever reason, wanted to go back and do some additional work on the high poly sculpt object, we would need to do the reverse. Obviously, we would want to check that. And if we want to hide the paint objects, we could do that here in the paint object section, just one at a time. 
if you need to delete any of these, you could do that here. And you can also lock it so it cannot be worked on right here with a little lock icon. Okay, so I will unhide each of these. Go back to the view menu, uncheck show voxels in paint room. And I'll hit the W key to enable wireframe. So again, I can inspect the results. Just want to see if I need to rebake. Everything looks good so far. Okay. So let's say we're happy with this result. We don't need to do any other texture painting, although we could. Then we are ready to go back to Blender. Before I do that, I just want to quickly mention, if you want at this stage to add an additional ambient occlusion layer, you could do that from the textures menu uh, under calculate occlusion. So I'm going to fire up Blender. It's already open. I'll pull that onto the screen. Now, because I've been away, I've closed both applications. The app link no longer sees a link between the two. So I need to take a slightly different approach. And in this case, in a file menu, rather than choosing open in the original app, this time I would choose export to Blender. I'll navigate to the folder that I want to place it into. I want to choose an FBX file because that tends to work best. Yes. Now I want to choose from the export presets the Blender app link. What you can do if you know which one of these maps you don't want to use, you could go ahead and delete them and then just create a new preset here. Name it accordingly. For example, Blender app link, maybe underscore NM for normal map only. Uh, so for example, if you're not going to use a displacement map, you could do it that way. Same thing with emissive. I don't have anything emissive in this project, so I don't need that. So let's go ahead and export. We can now move over to Blender. Let's come over to the right and click on this toggle. Or I could hit the N key, as in November, and then look for the 3D Coat tab right there. One change is we now have the Get Back button returned. What would happen previously when you saw only the Send button, the 3D Coat app link would automatically look for a change every 10 seconds or so. And if it saw a change, it would do this for you. But again, it's here for you to do it manually if you want. And that's what we want here. So let's go ahead and click Get Back. Now we have it. It appears appropriately sized. So the meters unit of measure seem to work well. Now let's click on the icon for Material Preview. And we can see that it came across properly. Okay, so I can see some issues here that I didn't see in 3D Coat. So let's go back to 3D Coat. I can either rebake this and send it back to Blender, or I can make some modifications, which I'll do that now. I want to create a new layer, and I'll just name this Touch Up. Let's see, with a paintbrush. I can use the eyedropper tool. I'm going to select that color. Go back to the paintbrush. And I want to choose more on concave. Let me look at the preview here. I only want the paint color. I'm going to disable depth and glossiness. Now, if we wanted to, we could do this to the entire object by using a fill tool and just tap that with more on convex chosen because it would do this across the entire model. In fact, let's just go ahead and do that. I'm just going to tap it. There we go. Now we're ready to go back to Blender. I'll go to the file menu, open an original app. 
we have our same settings that we used previously. Go ahead and hit export. In such a case where you're just making texture changes, you can uncheck the geometry and have it just send only the texture maps. Okay, let's go back to Blender. We will choose Get Back. And there we go. With that, we will conclude this series covering the process of round tripping a low poly quad mesh asset from Blender to 3D Coat where it's converted to voxels, had some sculpting edits done as well as texture painting applied, and then retrieving it back into Blender once we are finished. I hope you found this helpful. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.